More than 120 people gathered in Jackson for the 10th annual African American Leadership Conference. The meeting, held at the Agriculture Experiment Station, was sponsored by Weststar and is a time for folks to come together and discuss the needs and future of West Tennessee. We call it Weststar at Work. And that's exactly what this conference is, is Weststar at Work. The theme of it is opportunities and challenges and, and then leadership, leadership. And uh, we've had a just wonderful presentations today already on, on that aspect of leadership, uh, preparing yourself, getting a knowledge base, understanding your community, and then willing to step forward and make a difference. And that's, if, if folks walk away with anything today, it's that you've learned a little more and take that use it effectively in your communities, but take that step, that's critical. The conference keynote speaker was Rodriguez Kirby, owner of Small Business Learning Series and the Business Leaders Network. What you say here right now today determines your tomorrow, okay? So if you say my business won't do this or my business won't do that, or I won't get that promotion, or I won't do this in my school or business or profession, whatever it is, you won't do it. So everybody just repeat after me. Repeat after me. Okay. I commit myself. I commit myself to hard work and instruction. To hard work and instruction. I attune my ears. I attune my ears to hear words of knowledge. To hear words of knowledge. As I develop my business. As I develop my business. Time out. <laughs> it's called the business leader's confession and we confess what we want to happen. Okay, I'm a firm believer that what you say dictates, dictates the, you know, what happens to you tomorrow. So <clears throat> if you say that my business is going to fail, I don't have funding for this, or I, I really want this new job or promotion, you know, but I can't get it because of so-and-so, so-and-so, you're not gonna get it. But if you speak positive things you know, into the atmosphere, they'll happen. I believe words, you know, they equal life and death. So that's why we say it. As I develop my business, as I, develop my business I, will build it by wisdom, I will build it by wisdom, and it will become strong, and it will become strong through, good sense. through good sense. Good advice and success belong to me. Good advice and success belong to me. Insight and strength are mine. Insight and strength are mine. Success will follow me. Success will follow me. So you're saying that our words can affect our attitude. Absolutely. They charge the attitude and the atmosphere. You know, it, it determines what happens. You know, if we're going to speak negative, we're going to get negative. If you speak positive, you'll get positive. Success will follow me, same time. Success will follow me. Because I choose to lead. Because I choose to lead. With integrity. With integrity. Good planning. Good planning. Wisdom. Wisdom. Understanding. Understanding. And knowledge. And knowledge. Use those round of applause. It's your responsibility to use every talent, every gift, every ability that God has given us, you know, for the betterment of somebody else. If we're not using it, you know, then, then their dream dies because of us, because our inability to move forward with what we have, with the vision that we have. So, I mean, it's, it's absolutely critical that we're unafraid to go after what it is that we want to do in our life, whether it's a new promotion to a new job or it's a new business idea, whatever. You know, we have to move forward for somebody else. It's not about us. That's what leadership is all about. It's not about us. How do people find their talents? It's a, really a personal, personal journey. And I can tell you, for me, I found my talent through business. You know, I always had a niche or an idea to do this and that. But it really didn't come to fruition until I started my business. So everything that I am today, every talent, every gift that I have, it's resulted from business. So for someone, it might be through cooking. You know, they might be able to cook a little bit, but then they find out, hey, I'm able to teach somebody this. They might, you know, start some books or something from that, uh, that very thing that they love to do. You know, it, it all starts from our passion, whatever we're passionate about. What do you think are the most important business principles? For success, number one, serve others. Okay, you have to be a servant. You can't just go into business and just want money for yourself. 
you've got to go in knowing that, okay, I'm going to be successful anyway because I stepped out to do it. But now it's about somebody else. It's about someone else's success. That's what I want to, want to help. And number two, I think it's really about being creative, you know, thinking outside the box. You know, my model is what box? There is no box. You know, I, I don't like boxes. I like circles, personally. So, uh, and then number three, you have to be um, very aware of things that are going on around you. You have to listen. You have to communicate. You can't just hold everything inside. We're not an island. You have to let things out. And you've got to listen to other people, receive their criticisms, receive their, their help, their knowledge. Because that only helps you. And then you have to plan. If you don't plan your way, then you never make it to your destination. So planning is a, is a huge factor in being successful in business. What do you think is the single biggest mistake that people make when they start a business? When they venture out, if it's a brand new business, uh, the number one mistake would be you know, getting a business loan or getting uh, secure financing for the business, especially when it's a startup company. Um, and that kind of, a lot of people don't believe in, uh, in not getting funding. And they believe in you have to go get a business loan and all this other stuff. I think you can use everything that you have already to start your business, even if it's going to be a technology firm. You know, you can sell stuff on the internet. I mean, it's a huge, wide open field. So, um, and that and just being, not being prepared, not writing a plan out. You know, if you don't plan your way, like I said, you know, you won't have sure footing in what you step on. So, it's a, it's a huge misconception to, uh, to start your business just to jump out there and do it without having a nice, good plan written down. Think of it this way, if, you, if you're in you know, more than $5,000 worth of personal debt, which most people you know, have, especially with colleges you know, nowadays, if you're in more than $5,000 worth of personal debt, well, why would you go into even more debt to start a business? You say, well, I'm gonna go make money and pay off this debt. No, you're gonna make money to pay off the debt. You're gonna go, you're gonna go make money to continue making money to continue making money to continually pay off a debt that won't go away, you know, in the, your first year. It very much so will probably go away in, in three to five years. You know, it's, uh, it's slavery. That's what debt is. Debt is slavery. So you never, you never break the chains of slavery, you know, on your first go around. It takes a while. What message do you want the people attending this leadership conference today to take home? You can't live your life anymore. Not anymore. To mean today, it's you know 10 year, 10 year anniversary for the African American Business Leader, or the Leadership Conference, and um, you know it's because they stepped into the the place. You can't just live anymore. You have to lead. You have to. If you want to be at the next level, you got to lead. That's the only way to get there. You know. And number two, it's not about you. It's not about you know uh, you know your your want for money and wealth. It's about inspiring, you know, and empowering somebody else through your vision to get them on board so they can get their vision going. That's what it's about. The various conferences and workshops sponsored by Westar have another important lesson for those that attend, thinking beyond our personal and city limits. We've also got to think and live regionally uh, for so many reasons, uh, uh, economic reasons, educational reasons. I mean, you can just go down the list of the reasons why we need to cooperate, come together more regionally so we can lead better locally and then do the things regionally that are going to enhance West Tennessee. So in, in some ways that's, that's what we're trying to accomplish today with the African American Conference it, is that, is it, you know, a, a regional approach. And uh, at this point in time I think uh, we're all going to be better served when we learn how to do that.